Headlines have been made over the past few days that the movie industry is suffering greatly. 50% box office collapse since the pre-pandemic era. Folks, we've got news though. It's far worse and we've got the numbers. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pro Channel where we are dishing out the news and we are doing so with glee. Although I have to say for me, I don't enjoy relaying bad news, but bad news is sometimes the only way that you can get things turned around. And the movie industry, well, it needs things moved in the positive direction quickly, rapidly, because theaters are at the edge of collapse. We're not, uh, we're not overselling it. You listen in, you'll agree. Culture, welcome back to the channel, sir. The audience loves it when you're here and you're back for a second day in a row for a reason. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, Pro. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. This is a subject that I think we we need to we need to focus on more frequently because it really is showing a decline in the industry. Culture, you were here yesterday morning when we were talking about uh, a topic that's similar. Yeah. And behind the scenes, you passed me a note about the level of collapse that the movie theater industry has seen. And we've been talking about for months now that we're worried that theaters are going to go the way of Kmart and Sears. And I really mean that. And I also think that when theaters collapse, that what you lose there is you lose the eventification of movie releases. You also lose the communal aspect of people going to see a movie theater uh, together to go see the movie. Um, I, I think that's profoundly different. It's not better or worse. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it's profoundly different than sitting in your den or your basement and watching a movie by yourself. And so there may be something to this that's important societally and we would like to see theaters not collapse. But collapse, they are. And we have to go to Breitbart to find this article. But this is just the beginning, folks. We're going to go somewhere next that makes you, well, it makes us at least uh, shake just a little bit with fear that theaters are truly going under. From Breitbart, though, from John Nolte, year-to-date box office down near nearly 50% from pre-pandemic levels. Now, we have briefly covered this on the channel in the past. We're not going to dwell on it too long because it actually gets worse than this. But it says, compared to this date in 2020, the 2024 box office is down nearly 50%. Through the first three days of President's Day weekend, films that have been released widely in theaters have grossed $764.1 million, down 15% from the same period last year, reports the Wall Street Journal. That $764.1 million is just a tad over half the $1.3 billion generated by movie theaters in the U.S. and Canada in the opening weeks of 2020, just before the pandemic froze Hollywood. By the way... If I'm not mistaken, that was at the time that uh, the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie had released. Yeah, yeah, and Disney, al yeah Disney also had Onward in 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 theaters. Onward did not do as well as Sonic. We'll we'll say mm, that true. the lackluster start comes despite audiences having more theater options than they have had in years. This year through February 18th, there have been 11 wide release movies, or those showing in at least 2,000 locations nationwide. There were nine wide release titles through the same time frame last year. Now. It could be that uh, dropping 50% of your total box office numbers is devastating to the point of theaters collapsing. But culture, as we said, it's actually far, far worse than that. To figure that out, we have to go to the National Theater uh, Organization to find out uh, exactly how much movie tickets have been costing. And they have a calculation that they've been running, and we can see that in 2019, that's the last year that I consider to be truly pre-pandemic, that movie ticket prices were $9.16 according to the organization. However, if we go to a uh, group that doesn't have necessarily a financial interest in showing movie ticket prices being low, intelligence, what we find out is that those numbers are actually far, far larger. And this is going to matter for us figuring out how much of the audience has truly left the theater experience. Let's take a look at what it says. It says, in 2022... 15% of all domestic tickets sold were for premium screenings, with the average ticket costing $15.92, according to intelligence data. A standard ticket costs an average of $11.29. So far in 2023, that premium ticket average is higher, $17.33 each, because so many moviegoers saw Disney's Avatar The Way of Water in premium formats and 3D, this coming out of CNBC. Now, here's what's going on. Here's how we have the disparity between what the National uh, Theater Organization is saying, and what intelligence data is saying, culture. Mm -hmm. It seems that intelligence data is measuring every single ticket sold across the full spectrum of the market, and then they come up with an average. It seems that the uh, theaters, what they're doing 
is they are taking a look at every category of ticket and then measuring those equally. So a matinee, although it may have a very small number of participants in it, it gets measured equally with opening night premium format. And so that may pull that number down. It's not wrong, just a different way of figuring out that metric. But all that said, what that means, culture, to the audience out there listening to us, is that probably in 2023 and 2024, the average ticket uh, or the average price of a movie is at least over $12 and probably far higher. Now, if we go back to the uh, numbers we saw before in 2019, $9.16. So if the average ticket pr uh, average price of a ticket today is over $12, then we have far outstripped inflation. And what that means is that 50% drop in terms of the box office totals actually is far, far worse in terms of attendance of people. In other words, it's not 50% drop in attendance, even if it is 50% drop in box office, it's probably something like a 65% drop in attendance. Culture, well, what's your experience with movie ticket prices? What do you think people are actually paying? Okay, more look, most people now are moving to premium format screenings. Let's just be clear, right? It, yes. as, as long as they can afford them. And of course, as you mentioned when, when we started, films are an event, or they, they should be. Uh, it is a, it's a social event that you go to, kind of like a concert, which is why you saw the experiences people were having with the Taylor Swift film. Um, it, it's an experience in that way. It's communal, as you suggest, and it's it's something I would I would hate to lose. But at the same time, when people go to see an event, they go to they get the best that they can. And premium large format PLFs, people are going to spend the money to go see that. There mo more people will see uh, the film Dune two in a premium format the, if they can, if the screens are available, if they have the opportunity, then they will in just a standard, you know. 150 uh, seat theater, you know, in a small, a small room, they'd rather see it in that big, bigger format. So they'll pay that premium price. So you're going to see the ticket prices averaging, uh, going up, artificially bumping up what the box office revenues are for a given film. Now through this year, we can actually look at the amount of tickets sold and we can do that because there is, um, there's a lot of, a lot of data out there that would suggest that there's far less than half of the people attending theaters um, than than you would like uh, year year to year. I would suggest that even with a smaller audience count in um, in 2020, uh, you uh, up through the dates that that uh, uh, Nolte's talking about in that article, I would say that you're seeing you're seeing some artificially inflated. Uh, box office revenues that really indicate a, a, a further drop in in the number of tickets. So, sold. culture, we, we've got that data set. We yeah. have the data set, and you've provided it with yeah. the uh, number of tickets sold. We don't yeah. want to pull up that data set simply because there are parts of that data set that we believe have incomplete information. Yes, but the tickets sold do seem to be accurate. And yeah. so, let me just give the numbers to the folks out there, and, and then let me get your take exactly on why. Why yeah. the audience has completely left theaters, and, and once we give out these numbers, it's hard to it's hard to argue against it. Yeah. In 2019, 1.2 uh, billion tickets were sold across the world. 1.2 billion, with a B, mm -hmm. tickets sold in 2023. 849 million, so a loss of something like approximating 400 million tickets lower. That's yeah. that's huge. Yeah. So why do you think that is? Uh, well, it wasn't because I, there was there there were substantially fewer films released. There are there are that we had a phenomenal rate of flops. A lot of films that nobody was interested in seeing, and those numbers are only trending downward. Um, we're going to see far fewer people go and see far fewer films in this year of 2024. There's just not a lot to to go see. We've talked about this. I think uh, there's only a handful of films people are interested in, and Dune would be one of them. Ghostbusters would be another. And of course, um, uh, Daredevil. Uh, there, there just isn't a whole slate of films out there that people are interested in seeing. At the same time, you have the incredible underperformance of films that just a few years ago, had they been done properly and advertised properly, would have performed much higher. I, I fully expect this year to really put theater chains, smaller chains, in jeopardy. Um, I think even even uh, entities such as Cineworld. 
um, and, and all this and the Cinemark and all of that, I think they're going to start to struggle again. And I think you'll see AMC go through another, uh, another struggle. Um, I think that theaters are going to have to pivot to something else if they're trying to survive. And that can be events like UFC, things like that. Because again, as you pointed out, these are events, but what, what's bothering me and what does put at risk a lot of the local theater chains and, you know, the onesie twosie mom and pop owners is that they just aren't going to have anything to sell their customers. It's going to cost far too much money for them to maintain staffing to properly run their theater. Then they could actually turn around any kind of significant profit. And that's, that's going to be the place where I'm going to think we're going to feel a loss so in smaller towns where you don't have a national chain, it's possible you could end up with no theater. And that would be a tragedy. I, my biggest, like I said, my biggest concern is that as we dwindle away in entertainment and the offerings that people are willing to watch, and this feeds into a whole other conversation about, you know, things that people just are skipping over because of they're just not interested in them or they're turned off by their messaging. I think it's going to, I think it's going to continue to kill off Hollywood, all, all, all forms of Hollywood. And I released a video on this today, all forms of Hollywood, whether it be film or television of that town proper and its politics and studios, they're in big trouble. Uh, the, the, it's an industry that's, that's dying off. There are fewer acting jobs, uh, which means every other job on the board is also at risk. You're seeing 25 to 50% less uh, gigs available that that's devastating to an industry that just a few years ago, they were releasing nearly a thousand films out of Hollywood every year, uh, nearly that meant many, and they were producing record numbers of, 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 of revenues. They were producing, you know, uh, $12 billion worth of, of revenue annually. They're not so going to do looking that. at, uh, looking at the projected numbers we have here. I just want to say too, that, Back in the uh, early 2000s, up until about, oh, I don't know, 2014-ish, 2015-ish, movie tickets, uh, the numbers that were sold could be anywhere from 1.3 to 1.5 billion total, billion total tickets sold across yeah. the world. For 2024, we're actually looking at projected right now based on current trends, 2024 will likely come under 600 million. So when we talk about a devastating collapse in, in theater tickets sold, that's what we're talking about, going from 1.5 billion to less than 600 million. That's that's dramatic, and that's that's not sustainable for movie theaters because they were built on that prior uh, conception of how many people were going to come see them. The other thing that's going to happen, culture, is that when theaters have so few tickets sold, so you can look at the box office and you can say, well, it's a 50% decline, and then we talk about these numbers and you say, oh, well, the, the, it's actually far worse in attendance. It's just being masked by the rise in movie ticket prices. If, if, if movie ticket prices yeah. had stayed the same price, this would be way more catastrophic. But it's actually, th there's something else going on here, and that is that when you sell less tickets, when there are less butts in seats, yeah. okay, what that means is there's less popcorn buckets, there's less uh, soda being sold, there's less little candies and, and, and hot dogs and all that stuff. So then you have less people that you can employ in the concession stand, uh, you have less people who need to be involved in the movie theater business as a whole. And then you have to start increasing those prices dramatically. So you have to escalate the price of a uh, popcorn or a drink because you've got to get that, that profit margin back up there with so yeah. few people attending. And so I think I think that unless something happens, and this is all this is all Hollywood's fault, right? They said, oh, we're gonna have we've got Star Wars fatigue. Then they said, oh, we've got superhero fatigue. Now it's Disney fatigue. The problem here is bad movies. And Hollywood needs to fix this because if not, then theaters are going to go under. And then when oh. theaters go under, it's not going to be the streaming businesses that win. No. It's going to be video games. No. And I say that because the streaming business isn't going to win by this because the streaming business has essentially a locked in uh, revenue because they're not going to charge people an arm and a leg because they, they can't lose their users. And that's not enough to sustain these big giant blockbuster films. The big blockbuster films they only exist because they can get big blockbuster revenues out of the theater. So mm -hmm. that's going to shift all of that entirely uh, if, if this goes down. And then kids are going to be playing video games instead. And, you know, maybe that's maybe that's the next thing. Maybe we all switch to virtual reality and uh, everybody's using their little Apple goggles or whatever. But 
Mm -hmm. I, for one, would like to see theaters at least survive for a few more years. Let's let's at least have that. Culture, your final thoughts. Well, I, look, I'm with you. And, and anecdotally, just a quick story. I've seen my theater complex, um, the the one that's closest to me, the one, the largest one that's close to me. I've seen that one go from twenty five theaters, twenty five separate rooms, uh, projections, screens, whatever you want to call them. I've seen that on any given day have nearly half of those dark with nothing showing in them. I don't know, culture. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the next year or so they're going to be renting those out to birthday parties for people to play Fortnite. On the ginormous screen. I don't know. Yeah. And, and I would like, this is an entire industry. I don't want to lose. I have friends that are in the industry. I'm sure you do as well. Well, I think, it's, I think it provides something very positive to society. It does. And it, look, it, the, the Hollywood needs to get back to where they were pro. They need to get back to making four tent poles a year max per studio. And every other film needs to be a mid level or lower budget human interest piece, something like a comedy or a, you know, a rom-com or a, a high end drama or a biopic, which we're now seeing the shift to, but it needs to be something like that. That costs far less that just gets people employed and gets more butts and seats because cyclically you need new, f new films and theaters every single week to support the tent poles that are going to be there for multiple weeks. That's, just my observation, and we'll see if they actually get back to that model. But as of right now, there's 25% less content coming to you, and that's going to get worse. You're exactly right, culture. And to Hollywood, we say, get out of the propaganda business. Get back to making blockbusters that everybody can enjoy. Go back to universal themes. We don't care if your little Disney executives are mad about it. Uh, this is an industry that you cannot afford to lose. It's not necessarily like Sears and Kmart going out of business. It would be like if every big box retailer went out of business and boy, wouldn't that change the world. And I think the world is going to be a lesser place if the theater experience that we've had for a century or more is utterly gone. And that is a terrible price to pay for all of this wokeism. Personally, I don't think we should sacrifice the theater experience at the altar of DEI, but that's just me. Folks, every day we explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve, and now we need your vote of confidence. If you enjoyed this video, not necessarily the subject matter, but rather being in, uh, educated on what's happening with theaters, drop a like down below. Share, subscribe, and folks, don't forget to drop a comment down below and let us know your thoughts. Culture Casino is the place to be if you are wanting to find out the latest daily. Culture, tell us about that countdown you do. Oh, yeah. The Six Minute Daily is my uh, weekday countdown of news information uh, and, uh, well, just silliness sometimes. I love to do as many stories as I can in that six minutes, but uh, the show's roughly 12 and a half minutes long. So buckle in and get that every single day in the morning. Folks, if you're not yet a member of this channel, make sure that you click that join button. And if you want to try and grab a free membership, those are often gifted during the pro shows that we have on Tuesdays at noon Eastern stop by and check us out. Also, go check out our sister channel, That Park Place, for even more fantastic content where you will still find myself and culture over there as well. All right, folks, we bid you adieu for the day. We'll see you later. You all have a great time wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. Say it ain't so. This just in. Disney lost money on another movie. Why, that can't be. I thought that John Lasseter fella over at Pixar was cranking out the latest hits and Marvel was unstoppable and Disney princesses were a thing and Star Wars was a multi-billion dollar money-making franchise. I overheard you talking about Disney and wanted to let you know you're really behind the ball. If you were uh, getting great articles from thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel, you'd actually be ahead of the culture curve and have entertainment explained. <laughs>